Labor unions have had a tremendous impact on nearly every community in North America. Whole cities and towns have been decimated in areas where the workforce is controlled by unions. Until now, accurate knowledge of the operation and management of labor unions in North America has been a closely guarded secret known only to the very highest union officials. Ricardo Torres was one such highly ranking official working with national and international organizing efforts. After witnessing the destructive effect of unions on American businesses and workers for 24 years, Ricardo is now sharing the secrets of how unions plot to get inside your company and what you can do to stop labor unions from ruining your business. Ninety-nine percent of the time when there's an organizing campaign is because an employee calls us. And we make the, the, the determination whether those people are the type of people or dedicated enough for us to move forward with, with the campaign. We would ask the first fundamental questions. What are the reasons that you called us, that you wanted to meet with us? We would never do a campaign if we just got people who are gripers and people who are complainers and people who didn't have uh, 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 seniority or people who were disrespected. Some of the first things that they have to do is get us all the information from the company, the handbook, the policies, any information, any, any, any uh, correspondence that the company has given them over the last three, four, five years so we could use the company's own information against them. It's the best tool to use. But these workers had to also come to us with, within a week or two of that point if we're going to move forward to talk to us about what are the issues, to talk to us about who are the employees, to give us a blueprint of everybody that works at that facility. And I, when I say blueprint, I want to know who they are in a mini bio of, of each person. We had to understand what the history or the basic history of every worker was because we had to use that to propel them to want to be part of the union. If you have a facility that where 80% of the workers have grew up in that immediate area, we know that there's going to be relationships that they have with their employees that are going to be stronger than any relationship that they have with the company. Now, if we have supervisors who grew up in that area, and, they, and we know that we have employees that have been friends with them forever, then we know that we have to exploit that. It was very easy to get supervisors on our side. One of the things that I instructed my union organizers to do when they met with employees was to tell them the facts about what was going to happen. The minute I want these things for you more than you want them for yourself, we're out of there. We're gone because the driving force has to be with the workers. It's got to be about that they themselves feel that they've been disrespected that they're not appreciated within the company. They have to be angry. There's got to be a level of anger and frustration. Breakdown of communication is the biggest cause of union organizing campaigns, and what drives it are emotions. It's the same thing with union organizing campaigns. Workers have to be there's nothing else we can do. We're never going to get any satisfaction. And if we want to move forward in this company, then we need to unionize. We've gone to them. We went into their, they have an open door policy. We went there, guess what? The door was open, but the people behind the door were closed. They didn't listen. They didn't, you know, they didn't listen to us. They didn't pay attention to us. And we got nothing out of it. And in fact, we did get something out of it. We got targeted as troublemakers because we're going in there and bringing up issues. There's nothing more we can do, our backs against the wall. That's the perfect time for a union to come in, to organize. And it's all about anger and frustration. Unions promise workers everything under the sun. The problem is, the problem with doing that is that it rarely works. But it happens all the time. It all depends on the anger level of the workers that they're talking to. You have different organizers who will use any trick in the book to try to get someone to, to sign a card. And then you have the more sophisticated organizing tactics to where, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be driven by the workers who want to sign cards. We educated or miseducated them 
on exactly what the NLRB Act or the law stated was their rights. We exaggerated them to make them think that they had more rights than they had. The signing of cards really means nothing. It's building a trust with the workers, building a rapport with the workers. And it's got to be based on issues that the workers have with the employer. I've had many times when I was working for the union when we had people who said, you know why I want to be part of the union? My father passed away three weeks ago. And the union organizers came out there, sat with me, and talked with me, and, and, and held my hand as I grieved through the passing of my, of my father. Who would be the type of people that would want to join a union within your facility? And it had to be people who, were the, who had a lot of seniority. People who were your natural born leaders, your communicators, those were the people that we wanted that their co-workers were going to respect. If we did our job right and my organizers did their job right, they would say, you know what, they told us you were going to say this. They told us exactly what your campaign was going to be, what you were going to do, what you were going to say, so none of it's a surprise. The perfect organizing campaign is when the company, the first time a company knows that there's an organizing drive is the day that they get a petition. At some point in time, a couple of weeks before the election, they had to start taking over the, uh, the, the meetings, the captive audience meetings. They had to take them over. Anything to do to frustrate whoever was given the meeting and to take power, to take control of a meeting. There was very few captive audience meetings that we were not privy to the information, whether it be hiding a microphone in the room, whether it be someone turning the phone on and recording it. We always knew what was going on. And if anything was said that even came close to a violation, we would file charges. And it didn't matter to us if the charges were going to ultimately succeed, but to get the company to delete its resources. But they, it's also important that they have to understand what caused the union activity in the first place because that has to stop right away. It's when that trust is broken is when they start looking for a union. Have empathy for your people, have respect for your people, and have patience for your people. Management has to be professional, calm, and don't overreact. Those are the most important things that management needs to do. Workers have a inborn respect for management, and they follow management, and they follow management's leads. If there's layoffs, or if there's issues, or financial problems within the company, workers tend to naturally look to management for direction. A few years back, I was flying in a plane, and I was going to California. I was flying cross country, and there was turbulence in the plane, and. There were people who were scared, and a, a couple of small items from the, from the bins fell down, and people were scaring and saying prayers, and, and I was nervous as much as anybody else. Instinctively, I looked to the flight attendants to see what their reactions were. And they were walking through the aisle, and they were explaining what was happening with the turbulence, and they were calm and professional. And it gave everybody, especially me, it made me feel calm and reassured me that everything was going to be okay. Now, if the flight attendant was running up and down the aisles, screaming, oh my God, we're all going to die, then everybody would have been in a panic. The most important thing, no matter what's going on, whether it's the organizing uh, uh, petition that the company receives, whether it's layoffs, whether any turbulence within the company, management has to be professional, calm, and don't overreact. Those are the most important things that management needs to do if they want to reestablish the trust with their workers. It's the union's job to take that weakness in the foundation of the company and to exploit it and to make it weak. One of the reasons that during a union organizing campaign that organizers or the union would target managers 
is because they want to discredit them. They want to make it. Nobody can take a clown seriously. We had one situation in, 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 a, in a southern part of the country where the CEO was having a real intense campaign. In fact, I had five or six organizers there, about five or 600 members, and the campaign was starting to lose ground. And I told my organizers to go and to what we call garbage dump. And they went into the, to the garbage bin and they broke the lock and they brought garbage to the hotel in the area and to the war room. We ran out of big conference space. And they just started opening it to see what we can get. And we found out that, and we found letters between the CEO, and remember the CEO of this company was a well-respected man, businessman. He was, uh, he was part of the church. He was part of all the organizations within that town. It made him very powerful and, and well-respected. And he had a family, he had a wife, and he had, he had children. But what we found out when my organizers opened up the garbage is that he also had a mistress. And they had love letters between him and the mistress. They printed them all out and handed them out with the internal organizing committee to every worker that was walking in on all three shifts. Not only that, is that they sent it to um, uh, his executive board. They sent it to the board of the church and the other organizations that he, uh, that he belonged to. They sent it to his mistress. They also sent it to his wife. And the reason we did that was to create the atmosphere is that this person can't be trusted. It came between his word and his actions. And he couldn't be trusted, and in fact, we made a laughing stock out of him. I'm sure it destroyed his marriage. I'm sure it destroyed his reputation in the town. That None of that mattered because we won the campaign. It doesn't matter because winning was everything. And if people's lives got destroyed in the process, then that's just the way it goes. In the beginning days of a union organizing campaign or the process of one, whether there's a petition or not, you're going to have a lot of people in management who are going to be looking on how to protect their, their, their turf. Well, yeah, we understand, but it's not us. It's someone else. From that point on, our job was to keep hitting them and hitting them, to get them off guard, to get them using the resources that they would use in a, to, to run their company or to educate the workforce to get them to do this by defending accusations against them caused by us. Who were the, the supervisors that the, were, were the weak links within the, within the facility? And we would target them so that we could get them to explode. We would target them so we could get them to react, to violate a worker's rights. One of the ways that we used to get managers to react or get employees to target managers was to question everything that they did. If there's any safety question to not do the work, you know, according to the, to the work rules, to uh, slow the job down, but to question everything. But to really test them and to question them on everything, question everything that they're doing, to frustrate them and use phrases like, well, you told us you want us to be informed. We're trying to be informed. Nothing you say is going to change it. No flyers is, gonna, is what you do. All flyers or all information pieces or anything that you do is just talking points but it's how you calmly deal with the situation. Giving the workers the opportunity to vent is very important too. Because once they vent, then they're willing to listen. You have to create the environment where people are willing to listen to what you have to say. But you have to start treating your people right away with the dignity and respect that they deserve, talking to them. Most important, more important than talking to them is to listen to them and to try to re-bridge re that gap of communications that have caused you to come to this point. I think the first thing and the most important thing that management can bring to a situation when there's a union organizing campaign, especially a small campaign, is to bring an understanding what got them to that point and get that out of the way. I understand what you're going through. I understand 
This is what caused it. I understand. Now let's go from here. There's many reasons why a worker should not vote for a union. But to take away that hostility, talk to them about the one-on-ones of exactly what a union is. Most employees who are going through the election process are people who have never been through it before, who really themselves don't understand what a union is. Educate them. Don't be salespeople. Don't be pushy. Stick to your guns. Stick to your process and empower them with knowledge. When there's an organizing petition and there's an election day set, it's essential if management wants to win it. It's essential for them to take back the floor. You have to understand what brought your workers to that point. You have to have empathy with your employees. You have to have consistent, fair treatment of those workers and to educate them and bring the emotional level down. Being calm and being professional and being educated is essential. When we used to walk into a campaign, we used to know everything about management. We used to understand the weaknesses so we can exploit them against management. So the biggest thing is do not overreact. And that's the biggest mistake that, that uh, management makes. And that's one thing when I was working with, with unions is that we depended on management overreacting. But moving forward is, is very important, not getting caught up in the union's organizing strategy, not getting caught up in responding to what the union organizers say or do or the internal organizing committee. You have to move forward and you, you have to be directed towards what's it going to take for you to win. With success, with success comes responsibility. If you win a campaign, it's because you have reestablished that gap of communication between your company and your employees. You have to continue to move forward to communicate with your people, to reestablish that trust, to be consistent in your treatment with these people and your respect with them. What companies have to do is to put people forth in front that truly have a respect for the workers, that truly care about what happens to their employees. Because you can't fake caring about your people.